commodity of the near future will be human attention. Did you get that? Maybe you didn't, so I'll repeat myself. The true scarce commodity of the near future will be human attention. Now, we live in a world today where we are constantly being bombarded by different forms of media, all fighting for our attention. The average American checks their email 75 times a day. We check our phones 80 times a day, and we switch tasks on computers over 566 times a day. So it's no wonder that when Microsoft released this study that showed that the human attention spans have shrunk from 12 seconds in 2000 to 8 seconds in 2013, <laughs> people believed it. To put this in perspective, the attention span of a goldfish is nine seconds. <laughs> so Microsoft is telling us that human attention spans are on par with a goldfish? The same humans that during this time span created game-changing companies that connected the world, like Facebook and Twitter, electric cars from Tesla, or reusable rockets from SpaceX, these humans have the same attention span as a goldfish? I'm not buying it. Instead, I believe that humans are evolving. With the rise of the internet and mobile phones, access to information is faster than ever. And we now crave immersive information experiences, like XR. XR is a catch-all term for extended reality. It encapsulates the three major forms of immersive technologies. Virtual reality, where you're completely encapsulated in a digital world. Augmented reality, where you can see the real world around you, but there's a digital layer of information on top. And mixed reality, which is probably the most confusing. It's where digital objects can actually interact with the real world. So this Magic Leap example is a perfect example of mixed reality. You can see the digital whale interacting with the gym floor. But XR is more than just fancy visuals. Brain studies have been done to show that XR um, is double the visual attention as traditional media. And they have also found, through brain imaging technology, that memory encoding is 70% higher with XR than with traditional media. Now let's get into some ways that companies are using XR today. Virtual training is quickly becoming one of the best XR applications. It's being used to boost confidence, learning retention, and test scores on a variety of applications, from high-consequence police training in Singapore to Black Friday simulations for Walmart employees. <laughs> this stuff is really working. It's boosting learning outcomes and cutting costs for the companies. Virtual reality has also been called the ultimate empathy machine. And there's no better example than clouds over Cedra. This is a VR documentary that puts you into the first person's shoes of a 12-year-old girl named Sidra. She's a Syrian refugee, one of 80,000 that's stuck in the Zatari refugee camp on the border of Jordan and Syria. This film premiered at the UN, and since then, it has been widely used to sway public opinion and raise over $3.8 billion for the Syrian refugee crisis. The filmmaker Gabor Aurora said it best, the difference between pity and empathy is that pity is done from a hierarchy, whereas empathy is done from a shared experience. XR is also changing the way we buy. Major retailers like IKEA and Sephora are using mobile augmented reality applications to give their customers try-before-they-buy experiences. So now you can place digital furniture in your homes to see if it matches your decorations or if it's even going to fit. Or you can try makeup on your face 
before you even spend a dime. And the early data from the brands show that this stuff is really working. It's creating higher order values, higher sales conversions, more engagement, and less returns, because you know exactly what the product is going to look like. At Porsche, they're using XR to improve their daily maintenance operations. Using augmented reality headsets, a maintenance technician can remote assist in an expert that's thousands of miles away. And this is cutting Porsche's maintenance times down by a whopping 40%. Even the Weather Channel is using mixed reality. <laughs> this is an example that they recently used to show the life-threatening floods that Hurricane Florence could bring. Now, when most people think about augmented reality, they think about Pokemon Go. <laughs> I was in San Francisco at the time Pokemon Go launched, and I joined a Facebook group to play with other Pokemon Go players. I was amazed as this group swelled from 1,000 to 5,000 to 10,000 to eventually over 20,000 people who all wanted to play Pokemon Go together. The event got so big that the SFPD had to shut down the streets in San Francisco just so these people could play safely. And then I noticed something interesting. Business owners were catching wind of the crowds, and they learned that they could buy Pokestops or gyms to attract crowds of people looking for rare Pokemon. A few months later, I moved back to my hometown of Detroit. Being away for almost 10 years, I was exploring the city and stumbled upon a gem in Eastern Market. It was totally different from when I had left it. It had beautiful public art everywhere, people buzzing, and every time I went there, there was a new shop that opened. But there was one thing missing. People would go all around and take beautiful photos of the, of the murals on the outside of the buildings, but they would rarely step into these shops. This is when my brothers and I came up with the idea for Electrofly and augmented reality murals. We want to drive traffic to local businesses using immersive public art. And this example that you see is from a Denver Black Box mural that we're working on. We also have one in Detroit and Orlando planned. So what's next for XR? How is this technology going to impact our lives over the next 10 years? I have three big, bold predictions. The winner of the 2020 election will use XR to cut through the digital noise and deliver a more compelling message than the other candidate. JFK used TV, Obama used YouTube, Trump used Twitter, and the winner of the 2020 election will use XR to get your vote. Big, bold prediction number two. By 2022, our phones will almost disappear, and half of Americans will be using XR glasses. You will now not have to look down at your screen. All of the information will be fed to your eyes. Now, when Apple launches these XR glasses, it will be a watershed moment for the industry. Apple XR glasses will do for XR what the iPhone did for mobility, opening up a world of new possibilities. Big, bold prediction number three. By 2025, all new vehicles will have holographic heads-up displays installed, every single new vehicle. This will give way to new wayfinding and navigation applications, as well as location-based advertising, and a variety of different entertainment options. So I'll leave you with one final thought. It's 2025, and our phones, as we know it, have died. When everyone is using these XR glasses, how do you plan to reach your customer? Thank you.